You are listening to Addressing Gettysburg. Hello, Patreon. Thanks again for listening. And today we are talking to Dr. Ashley Whitehead Lusky. She's the assistant director of the Civil War Institute at Gettysburg College. And of course, when I say we, I mean me and Bob. Hello, Bob. Hello, Matt. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Great, great. Uh, One of the things that they do at the Civil War Institute is a little project called Killed at Gettysburg. It's at killedatgettysburg.org. Um, it's really neat there. It's a, it's an ambitious project. Wouldn't you say, Bob? I would, but it was started in two, uh, two, two, <laughs> 2017. <laughs> Thank you. It was started in 2017 by Dr. Carmichael himself and, uh, Ashley runs it now. And it is, uh, they're basically going through the kill to Gettysburg and writing profiles on the men from what they can find. They've got about, I think, 25 so far. 26, I think. 26 or 25, yeah, something like that. So they've got a ways to go before they get to all 7,000, if they're going to get to 7,000. The scope of the project has changed over the last two years. What, two years, right? Yeah, this is 2019. And um, so who knows? By the time it's all said and done, they may even include horses into the whole thing. We don't know. <laughs> but um, She did not say that. She didn't say that. That's what I'm saying. So Dr. Lusky is a native of Massachusetts. She went to William & Mary and then on to West Virginia University where she studied under Dr. Carmichael. She worked for the National Park Service at Richmond for eight years. She's married to another Civil War nerd who teaches at WVU. And she has two daughters, one three-year-old and five-month-old. And she's, the, as I said, the assistant director at the Civil War Institute. And she is our guest today. And um, we had a pretty good conversation with her today. Uh, did, wouldn't Absolutely. you say that, Bob? Yeah. Yes. Yes, I would, too. And um, we learned something, didn't we? I think we did. Oh, we, yes. Well, yeah, we definitely learned something, which is great because I'm learning. Bob's learning. You're learning. So learn with us as we talk to Dr. Ashley Whitehead Lusky about Killed at Gettysburg. It started in 2017. Yes. Were you there at the time? No. So it actually it began in Pete Carmichael's class. I believe it was the Civil War or Gettysburg in History and Memory might have been the class. Okay. Um, and so the students who were in that class were kind of spearheading it to start. Um, and that's when it was kind of narrowly defined in in terms of the length of the profiles, in terms of what soldiers were being targeted for it. Um, Originally, it was set up so that the soldiers would all be Union soldiers who are buried in the National Cemetery. So someone, say, could go to Gettysburg, visit the grave of one specific soldier, and then tap into this website and say, oh, I'm gonna follow this person's journey from their hometown, you know, why they signed up, family background, all the way up through Gettysburg itself, Uh, the final footsteps part that we have in the map component of the project, and then looking at the legacy, the impact of their death uh, on their family and their community. Um, I think that's a really cool idea. Um, How how do you find all that information? Well, first of all, let's, I guess, let's go back for a second. Yeah. There's more than 7,000 that died in the battle. Yes. Um, How many do you have on the, on the website so far? I want to say we have maybe 15 to 20, Okay, maybe a little over 20. So it takes a while to do. It does. Um, because you're, you're trying to get as much of, um, as much biographical information on these people as you can. Yes. And then tell the story of their death and you yes. got to research it. Who's researching it? So we have a combination of students. We have um, students from our fellows program at the Civil War Institute, which is basically a work study program. Mm -hmm. Um, Those are usually sophomores, juniors, and seniors who get paid to do research and writing projects. Um, So they're working on some of them, but then we also have first year students who've been kind of brought into the CWI through this project. And we take them down to the National Archives to do research, kind of introduce them to the historical craft, take them up to the Park Service um, to work with John Heiser, looking up some research about their soldier. Um, So they've also been working on the project, first years and then students from the Fellows Program. So a small group of students, uh, but as you said, each profile takes a long time to dig up all the necessary information. It's also a practice in helping the students 
learn the historian's writing craft. And so there's a lot of peer editing, peer workshops, talking about writing, talking about interpretation for a public audience. Um, so that's a huge component of it too, is kind of finessing the writing skills and then learning the digital tools. So that takes a while. Can non-students help with this? This sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, and we've had that question actually um, from a couple of people who've I think been to the site and have wanted to get involved. And to this point, we have said no, just because it's so mean. time intensive. Yes, we're, <laughs> we're mean and exclusive. <laughs> um, it just takes so long to do these yeah. posts that we really have to have the students or the people that we're working with right there with us so yeah. that we can have these meetings, sit down with people. Um, and students have the time. Yes, <laughs> we're, right. we try to make them have the time. <laughs> Actually, how long does it take from assignment of student <clears throat> or of soldier to completion? posted on the website? For the student fellows, it's usually been a semester per soldier. Um, for the first year students, um, because they are adjusting to everything new about college life as well as doing this new history project, it's usually a full school year that it takes to get a profile okay. up. Ooh. And once once their work is complete, is there like an editor in chief? Is that you? Uh, what, what happens after their work is submitted? Yeah, so I look at their work every step of the way. We break it down into kind of bite-sized portions so that they don't get overwhelmed to start out with. Mm -hmm. And then we'll sit down and we'll workshop, say everyone submits um, the pre-Gettysburg section, the family section, the community, the reasons for enlistment, that kind of stuff. We sit down, we circulate them beforehand, the students take a look at them, and then we talk about um, big interpretive ideas, kind of strengths and weaknesses, what they were hoping to accomplish, have they accomplished it yet? And then they'll go back and they'll take those edits that I've given them and that their peers have given them, and they'll bring it back for another revision. Um, and then we'll do that until the end of the semester when everything is submitted. I always make sure that they sign off on any changes or suggestions I have for them. And then they're the ones who actually post on the website. So they learn the digital tools, they'll go through and post everything and I'll take just one final look at it before it goes live. Do, do you ever find that some work that's been submitted by a student might have pretty major factual errors or anything? Um, Every now and then something will come up that I think is just um, maybe a typo or something slipped their mind. They've been pretty, pretty good, pretty thorough about um, making sure their facts are right. And you know, that rigorous back and forth that we have those editing the sessions. Editing, yeah, 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 that really helps to get rid of any mistakes that do come up. Cause that's one of the things, I mean, this is a student project. So we right. want this to be predominantly their work. But we don't want to have a lot of, you know, mistakes out there. There are going to be things that fall through here and there, um, but big mistakes, you know, we definitely want to correct. Now on the website, there's an interesting map where there's points on the map at Gettysburg where um, monuments or farms or areas where that particular unit was. Mm -hmm. Is that the work of the students too, or is that more you, or is there? Yes, that is the students too. Um, they get trained in the ArcGIS Story Map program, okay. uh, which is a tool that we've learned through um, the library at Gettysburg College, their digital um, resources team that comes in and gives them a workshop on how to use these tools, WordPress, Flickr, the Story Map. And then the students um, are in charge of transporting themselves out there to the battlefield finding out where their unit was, any landmarks that their particular soldier might be associated with, taking photos um, that you know capture moments in time, you know, this is what the soldier would have seen at this point in the battle, and then writing some interpretive captions. And then they learn how to actually plant the pin using the GIS technology as to where they mm. were when they took that cool. picture. Cool, so as a former educator, I like the multi, disciplinary approach to this whole thing. Yes. Learning a couple of different yes. skills. And sometimes they have to get creative about how they get out there. I have some students who are avid runners who take 10 mile runs and then they'll just stop and take their story map <laughs> pictures while they're out and then they'll run back and upload them. So um, it's fun, I think, for them to go out there. In one case, I noticed, uh, um, is it Major Carney from the 11th yeah, New Jersey? Yeah. Uh, his grave is in New York State. Would yes. the kid have gone there to take that photograph or gotten that picture offline or something? So in those instances, and that's again another development in the project, um, 
where soldiers who the students found that they really wanted to research them, but they're not in the cemetery or they're probably in the cemetery, but in the sea of unknowns, mm. um, we started saying, well, maybe the map can go a little bit beyond Gettysburg and they can find a picture that's obviously not copyright, um, get a picture of the grave, and then they can plant the pin on the GIS technology for where that, that, um, grave that gravestone is. Mm-hmm. is. Um, so they don't actually have to go there as long as the the picture they use is fair use. It's fine. Okay. And yeah. you said that uh, it takes about a year to get a profile up. Yeah, for a first year student. For a first year student. But how many profiles on average are you getting up in a year? Um, so it depends on how many student workers we have and how many first year students we have. Um, last year we got up, well, one student took on two soldiers per semester, which was very ambitious. Um, so I want to say, I think we got maybe nine last year. So we probably have upwards of maybe maybe twenty five on the site now. Yeah, that I something think about like that. It. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it just depends on how fast they work. So what did you? How did? How many did you say in a year? Um, we got I think maybe nine last nine. year. Nine. Okay. Yeah. So that's pretty good. Yeah. So let, let's see how many thousands of years would that take you to do? <laughs> <laughs> and that's the question that we get all the time is, yeah. all right, so where do you cut this thing off? And if you're not going to do all 7,000, then what's the point of it? No, um, you have to do all 7,000. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but this is, this is a, this is like a legacy thing. Like this is something that will continue for generations. I would hope that this continues. Um, we're trying to spread more awareness about it. Um, writing up little blog posts and things uh, that we send out to other websites to get people more aware of it. Right. The park service also helps to spread the word. What do you need? Like, what do you need people to do and support wise? Like uh, people listening now, like what can they do to help it grow? So I would say spread the word, share the website, yeah. share the links, um, make sure people know about it. Sometimes we actually, we get people writing in who say, I have an ancestor and I have letters and I have a photo. Right. Would you be able to take my soldier and write mm. about him? And, and we've done that. And now he was killed at Gettysburg. Yeah. Yes. Very yes. Cool. And in they, fact, that was a question I, that I had. Somebody asked me, like, do they, oh, do they look up your relative if you know you have one? Because somebody, right. one of my, I think it was a Facebook follower, said that they have a relative they know who died here. Yes. But they don't really know anything about him beforehand. Yes. And they're not really into researching and all that other stuff. Right. And they, they wanted me to ask you, like, could you do yeah. that? If they give you the name and everything, could they, yeah. could you guys look into the person? I mean, why not? If you're going to yeah. do all 7,000. Yeah. I mean, right. well, what does it matter where it's coming from? <laughs> we add it to the files. We have so many. I mean, part of the, the challenge with that is obviously we're not a, a research institution because we have just a small number of students. Um, and there are, we want to give the students some choice in who they pick. Um, so you don't want to necessarily always assign them a soldier unless they're completely lost or don't know where to begin and they want a soldier's name given to them. Um, but we've done that a couple of times. But could, could, couldn't it be something that you did open to the public to come in and help with, but the students take the lead on things? Because yeah. I, I would imagine that there, there are people that they may not have as much time to do sure. it, but whatever free time, like retired people. Yeah. Like right. they would have free time. Right. And, right. and you know, any bit of help could help. Sure. <laughs> right? And I think the thing that's most helpful is if people do contact us with some documents or a research lead or photos, um, sometimes students start with just the name of a soldier. They really have absolutely no idea what his story is. They want that challenge, you know, not mm-hmm. knowing anything going mm-hmm. in. And they come up with some pretty cool stuff. Yeah. Other times, they have been given a research lead. One student took on Philip Hamlin, who was a sergeant in the first Minnesota, um, and he had 95 pages of typed letters uh, between him and his family. Now, that profile was incredibly rich because we had a picture, we had letters, we had the background info. So the more we have about the soldier, the richer the profile is going to be. Mm. So I would say that would probably be the, the most helpful thing is if people could supply us with maybe some background information to help sure. whoever's doing it create a richer profile. Right. right. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, and how do they, the names, they come from themselves or do you just assign a name to the person if they don't have yeah, a Yeah, that's a good yeah. question. What's the process of? So some of them have, you know, they're, usually these students are pretty um, passionate, uh, budding Civil War historians. So they've done a lot of reading and they've heard a name on a tour 
or in a book that they're reading and they say, I want to, you know, research this individual. Other times they'll say, you know, I just want to start from scratch and pick someone I don't know. So we um, send them to the Busey and Busey book, uh, the register of all the dead and wounded um, at Gettysburg. And they have sometimes little vignettes in there, just, you know, a few lines here or there that tells where they were wounded or where they came from or how old they were. And that's where they sometimes get. Want to hear the rest of this episode and more like it? Then go to patreon.com slash addressing Gettysburg. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash addressing Gettysburg and become a patron today.